You are my provider. We will surely provide for you. You are my provider. Oh, you are my provider, Father. You are my provider. Oh, you are my provider. Oh, you are my provider. You will surely provide for me. You are my provider. Oh, you are my provider, Father. You are my provider. Oh, you are my provider. You are my provider. You will surely provide for me. You are my provider. You are my provider, Father. You are my provider. Oh, you are my provider. You are my provider. You will surely provide for me. You are my provider. You are my provider, Father. You are my provider. Oh, you are my provider. You are my. You will surely provide for me. You are my provider. Hallelujah. A shed of day, Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy upon our life. Father, we thank you for your presence in our midst. Father, we thank you for the breath of life. We thank you, O oh Lord Jesus, Father, for another day in your presence. We glorify your holy name. We give you the praise. We give you the adoration. We give you the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah, brethren. God bless you all. Those that are here to listen to me in this wonderful moment. I just wanted to discuss about, about something that I was reading in the Word of God. I think it's something that will interest, it will interest you to know. Um, I was reading about um, Matthew 7. I start from 21, 21 all the way to 23. The Bible is telling us that um, not everyone that says, Lord, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of, the, of my Father which is in heaven. Many will, say on, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we no, not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. So when I read this Bible verse, I was wondering, I said, what makes the ministers of God, after doing the great work of God, after working so hard in the vineyard of God, then, at the end of the day, when you're expecting to get your reward, instead of getting the reward that you've been working hard for, the next minute you're hearing the part that I never knew you. What makes them to be rejected? Jesus said that he did not deny, in this Bible verse, Jesus did not deny that they never worked for him. He never denied that they never did miracle. He never denied that they never done the work of God. But he told that he never knew them. So that means men, it's possible to be doing the work of God and God did not even know you. Your name is not even in the book of life. You are not even recognized in heaven. It's very possible. That means doing the work of God is not a guarantee that you are right with God or you make it to heaven. But it's your relationship with God. Let us always try, our, try hard to make God know us, our work to be approved by God, not to be approved by man. Man can approve your work, but what about heaven? What about Jesus? He's the one that needs to approve our work. After reading this scripture, I start to you know to ask myself question: What makes uh, the ministers of God, the children of God, after knowing the truth, after working hard, they still have to be rejected by God to say, "I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity." So as I was carrying on, start to check through the word of God, the scripture, iniquity means something that you find pleasure. It's something that is not even, it's no long, you know that's the sin that you love so much. The thing that you defend so much, you know that this is a sin, but you always look for a scripture that will back it up. 
These are the iniquity. Iniquity is, is something that it dwells in us. Iniquity is something that you do constantly. It's no longer a sin but become iniquity. It become like something that is part of you. Lying, it become part of you. If you don't lie, you don't feel good. Even when it's not necessary to lie because the lie is already in you deeply in you you still have to lie even when it's not necessary to lie stealing you cannot do without stealing that is iniquity you have this you can easily be bitter something that dwells in you it become part of you that is iniquity that is iniquity and iniquity is not something that you can say that you're I plead the blood of Jesus. It's something that you need to confess. You need to get rid of. You need to say that not enough is enough. I don't want this one. I need the grace of God to take me out of it. Apostle Paul was struggling with iniquity. He was struggling with iniquity. Although he was not committing sin, but iniquity was dwelling on him. That exactly what makes him to cry to God for mercy. He said, who can deliver me? In this body of death, it's only God that can take you out of iniquity. Iniquity is something that dwells in you and you don't even know. Most of the time, you don't even know. David did not know that iniquity was dwelling in him until he manifest iniquity for him. It was adultery. If he knew that he was struggling with adultery, he would not make that mistake of committing that adultery. He would get rid of it. Many people are struggling with uh, iniquity. Maybe you have, you have heard about it. Somebody tells you that. Why you always lie? Why you always steal? There's many ways of stealing. People steal in their business by increasing price in something that doesn't even mean that thing. You need to stop lying. Those are lying spirits. That it become iniquity. You need to get rid of it. Because even though you are reading the Bible, you are doing the work of God, you are fasting, you are praying. If you don't get rid of it, it's going to destroy your salvation. Check the iniquity in your life. Check the iniquity. Some people is adultery. They cannot stay without, the, they, they struggle with the spirit of loss. That loss is iniquity inside you. You need to get rid of it. You need to confess and ask God. Only God, God uh, can ask you. Uh, only God can help you. That's why the Bible says, if God is to, to, um, to count iniquity in somebody's life, you know, who will stand? Nobody will stand because some everybody struggle if one thing to another. When they brought that adulterous woman in uh, to, uh, to Jesus, those people that came to report this woman to Jesus, they didn't know that they too they were struggling with iniquity until our Lord Jesus pointed out on them. When our Lord Jesus pointed out on them, then they knew that, yes, their conscience, the Bible said their conscience told them, Nobody told them their conscience, each one of them, he discovered that he have iniquity or struggling with iniquity. No sin, but iniquity, something that they always do. And they don't, they don't even acknowledge that this is enough to disqualify them. They don't even know that this one is enough to take them out of the presence of God. This one is enough. The Bible is not looking for a big sin. It's not looking for that sin that is known by people. That strange sin that you say that, oh, I did not commit adultery. I did not kill. I did not do. There's way, many ways the Bible is making us to understand there's many ways of killing. You can say you never commit a, a abortion, you never kill, you never commit murder. But what about hating? The Bible says if you hate your brother without cause, you are a murderer. You're already killing that person in your heart. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, oh, you say I never commit adultery. But when you lost after a woman in your heart, you're already committing adultery. This can be a thing that you need to get rid of it. We commit, we repent. We ask for forgiveness, and tomorrow we find the, we find ourselves again in that very sin. It becomes something that you are so used to it. It becomes part of you. That is iniquity God wants us to get rid of. So then that day, we will not hear the part. We will not hear rejection from our Lord Jesus to say, I never knew you. Because each time you commit a sin, the Bible says when you lie, you become the, the father of uh, the, do, the daughter or the son of Satan. When you commit a sin, you no longer, the Bible says we can't show the glory of God. 
the time we are living is not the time of destruction. It's the time of to check our life constantly. It's the time that to go before God in prayer and ask for mercy. As for cleanliness, the Bible is telling us that we need to cleanse in in Second Corinthians seven verse one. It says we should therefore we should clean ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit to perfect holiness with the fear of God. If we are not perfecting holiness with the fear of God, there is no heaven for us. We see how the world is getting tough. Is getting the wickedness of the wicked is increasing daily. Uh, people are saying that oh, uh, vaccination is the mark of the beast. If vaccination is the mark of the beast, what makes you to miss rapture? Because the Bible cannot contradict itself. Vaccination can be anything bad, can be anything evil, but it's not the mark of the beast because the Bible cannot contradict itself. The Bible says that after the rapture, those that will miss the rapture, they, will be, they have to face the mark of the beast. They will suffer persecution. This is not even comparing to the persecution. The rapture has not taken place yet. Because what the terrible, the darkness has not yet taken place. The, 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 the plan, the children have not yet start disappearing. What people? What makes people to believe that the vaccination is the mark of the beast? It can be preparation of the mark of the beast, but it's not the mark of the beast. If it's the mark of the beast, then you miss rapture. Then, if you miss rapture, try to find out what makes you to miss rapture. Start preparing now how to face the terrible judgment of the antichrist because it's going to torture everybody after the rapture for reason why you miss it and it's going to torture for the truth that you know and you never put it in practice those that will be left behind they'll be left because of sin they'll be left behind because of iniquity they'll be left behind because of disobedience in the word of god i refuse to be one of them that will be left behind that's why I, we're working hard that's why i'm here to try to hold ourselves to check our lives so that we don't be part of it yes you have the reason to not to get vaccination me myself i've not get vaccination i've not get it i don't know how it's going to be I don't know. I cannot say that I'll get it or I'll not get it. All I know, God will give me the grace. Anything bad is not going to enter my body. But it's not because it's the mark of the beast. Mark of the beast cannot take place before rapture. If mark of the beast comes before rapture, then who is going to be rapture? Then the word of God is now what? That the word of God is not real? Is not the way it is? We need to be very careful. Let us read our Bible and start in the word of God. The rapture will take place very soon. The question is, are you prepared for it? Yes, you have the power to say, I will not get the vaccination. Yes, because they are not forcing people. But the mark of the beast, you have no choice because they will force you by fire, by force. And you have to save yourself through your blood, no longer the blood of Jesus, no longer the Holy Spirit. So let us start opening our spiritual eyes through all these things that is happening around us. Because this is the sign. How? It can be. This is even nothing comparing to the worst thing that is about to happen. So let us not be among those that are going to face the worst part of all these things that is happening. Let us be far. Let us be in a peaceful place when this thing is gone. Let us pray also. You can say that you're prepared. What about your family? Pray for your family. Pray for your children. Pray for your, your friends. Pray for them. your ministry even. The body of Christ. Let us come together and pray for the body of Christ. Body of Christ is not ready. Our Lord is ready. The Father is ready. The angels are ready. Everything is ready. But the body of Christ is not ready. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to prepare the body of Christ to be united in love. To wash our garment with the blood of Jesus. To cleanse ourselves from every filthiness. So that that day when our Lord Jesus appears, we don't need to worry for anything. We don't need to worry for all this mark of the beast because we are not going to be part of it. It's not going to happen when we are here. It's going to happen when the church is left, when the church will be raptured. Let us be that church that is going to be raptured. The Bible says we should preserve ourselves blameless, not just ourselves, but our soul, body, spirit to be preserved blameless from the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is first and first Thessalonians 5.23. We need to prepare ourselves. Our body have to be prepared. Our soul have to be prepared. Our spirit also have to be prepared. How do you know your spirit is not prepared? By the kind of dream you'll be having in the night. You as a child of God, you still having, you are still fornicating in your dream. How do you fornicate two spiritual husbands, spiritual wife? 
You, your child of God, you pray, you fast, you claim that the spirit of God is in you. But each night, your spirit is being polluted by the demons. That means you are not right. Your spirit is not yet cleansed. That's why in Second Thessalonians, Second uh, Corinthians seven one say we should cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and all filthiness of the spirit. Because your flesh can be right, but your spirit is not right through your dreams. Some people they are still eating on the dream, having the Holy Spirit on them, praying, praying. But in the night you are a wizard. In the night you are a witch because you don't even know unconscious witchcraft. You do things in your dream that you don't do in the daytime. You have no control in your spirit. You eat in the dream. You have uh, sex in the dream. You, you kill in the dream. You fly, visit, find yourself in Africa when you are in Europe. How do you go to Africa? In the daytime, you cannot go. Some of them in the daytime, they don't even have passport documents. But they find themselves each night in Africa, eating in a wrong environment with unknown people. That is a witchcraft. Then your spirit is not clean. If you find yourself with those funny, funny dreams, some people, physically, they don't have children. In the night, they, give, they see themselves giving birth, pregnant in the dream, feeding, uh, breastfeeding babies in the dream, having wife in the dream. They have family in the dream. Your spirit is not clean. When you see yourself in this kind of dream, you know that your spirit is not right with God. Your spirit is polluted by the enemy. Some of them, they find themselves under the sea, doing what? Swimming in the night. You have the marine spirit controlling your spirit. How do you expect God to know you? Because it's not your flesh that is going to be raptured, but your spirit. If your spirit is not right, if your spirit, your spirit is not clean, if your spirit is filthy, when do you think you are going to see rapture? When do you think you are going to make it to heaven? Because there's no filthy thing in heaven. Everything is holy. People don't take it as a joke. Everything in heaven is holy. That's why the Bible is telling us in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, go and read it yourself. It says we should preserve our soul, body, spirit, blameless blameless spotless what our spirit our soul and our body three in one if you say my body is blameless my my soul is blameless what about your spirit you always eat human being in the night drink human being blood human being flesh and you say your spirit is blameless you hear the part i never knew you you always pollute your spirit, your, the temple of God in the night with demons. You see yourself sleeping with strangers in your dream. Having sex with unknown people in the dream. And you say you want to make it to heaven. Your spirit is be, your body become a temple of demons. And you say you want to make heaven. Which heaven? Which rapture are you waiting with that filthy spirit? For the word of God to tell us in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1, for the word of God to tell us to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and filthiness of the spirit, because the spirit can be filthy too. That's why it's telling us that even the spirit have to be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus. Not just the body, not just the soul, including the spirit. And how do you know your spirit is not, is filthy? It's through the dream. Check your dreams. If you see yourself flying the night, you find yourself in a different place, you are in Europe, you always see yourself in Africa. This is the time to go into prayer. Spiritual cleansing. You have to cleanse yourself. Ask God to cleanse you. To cleanse the temple of God. It's not the temple of demon, but the temple of God. If you see yourself eating in the dream, cooking for unknown people in the dream, that is time to put the spoon aside. That is the time to fast and pray. Ask God for spiritual cleansing. To cleanse your spirit. Until you find yourself in a good revelation, a good dreams. You are reading the word of God. You are receiving from God. You are doing something that is pleasing God. Then you know that your spirit is clean. It's no longer filthy. You do things that you know. Some people, they see themselves swimming in the river. Doing one manner of things, your spirit is filthy. That means the enemy is using your spirit. Some people, they don't even dream at all. 
Some people, they don't even uh, uh, dream at all. They don't dream. When they dream, when they wake up, they, for, they forget their dreams. They forget their dreams. They don't remember because the enemy doesn't want them to remember. You know? The enemy want, doesn't want to, uh, to, 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 to the, them to remember their dreams so that they will not repent. You know? They will not repent. My sister, the mark of the beast has not yet started. The tribulation will start before the rapture. The tribulation will start before the rapture. But the mark of the beast only after the church will be rapture. Even the tribulation is going to be for a short period. That's why in Matthew 24 say it's going to be for a short period. Because if you're going, even the very elect, they'll be deceived. They'll be deceived. I'm not saying the vaccination is a good thing. I'm not saying that. I don't even know what the vaccination is for. Because some people are taking it. Me, myself, I've not taken it. Because I've, I, I, I don't want to take it. Because of all those videos that are circulating, the doctors are saying things about vaccination. I'm not saying that. But I'm not saying because some people are saying that, oh, uh, very soon it's going to be no sell, no do this, no do that. In some country, they're already saying that you cannot travel without, without it. I came from Africa. They asked me. I told them I did not take it. It's not by force. They are not forcing anybody. It's by choice. It is by choice. The mark of the beast is going to happen. It's going to happen. But the church of God is not going to be here. Because the Bible says that after the rapture, the great darkness will take over the world. And people will be screaming for their children. People will be screaming that they lost their babies. People, they will be looking for their children. And the Bible says that the dead will raise first. Yet, we have not seen people looking for their babies. We have not seen the great darkness has taking place. So even if it's the mark of the beast, are you prepared for for the rapture? That is the question. If the vaccination is the mark of the beast, how prepared are you? Are you prepared? Are you trying to check your life to say, oh Lord, this is one of the signs. Since the mark of the beast is vaccination, how am I, go, how, how am I prepared spiritually so that it, it, I will not get injected? I will not get injected. So how am I prepared myself? Because only those that are going to miss the rapture that will take the mark of the beast. That's what the Bible said. It's not the elector that are going to pay, but the, those that will miss rapture, they have to face the mark of the beast. Even those that are having revelation. You too read your Bible, my sister. Read your Bible very well. Stop listening to left and center. Because even the fake Jesus, the Bible says in Matthew 24 that fake Christ will arise to deceive many. Fake prophet will arise to deceive many. But we should stuck in the word of God. When you see something that is not, is not the way it is, you have to read your Bible to find out. What they are saying, is it biblical? Because it's Bible that is going to judge us. It's not the testimony of other people. It's the Bible. If the Bible is telling you that vaccination is the mark of the beast, that is going to happen before rapture, then believe in your Bible. But if the Bible says that after the rapture, the, 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 the greater darkness, the Antichrist will start arresting people. People will be running. Those people that you miss the rapture, they will be running for their life, hiding. Because they will refuse to get the mark. That's why the Bible says, I'm reading King James Version. I don't know which version you are reading. But if you read King James Version, there's no way the mark of the beast will take place before rapture. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying I don't know anything about vaccination. I'm just saying that the, the word of God cannot contradict itself. The word of God cannot contradict itself. So if, if the vaccination is the mark of the beast, are you prepared for the great day of the law? Because this day is going to happen whether we like it or not. And many people will die before the rapture takes place. We are going to face our judgment. Are you prepared for it? Are you, do you already know how your judgment is going to, to be? Have you done with your restitution? Have you followed peace with all man? Do you have anything that you need to get rid of in your house? Is your family safe? What about your husband, your children, your wife? Are they safe? 
Your family are saved. Have you winning soul for Christ? Have you done the work of God? Because we are all called to win souls for Christ. Have you done this so far? You are focusing on vaccination. Focus in your life. It's not vaccination that is going to stand before the judgment of God. It's your life. It's your spirit. You are wasting time taking vaccination is the mark of the beast. Yeah. If the vaccination is the mark of the beast, what about your judgment? Are you ready for it? Because you face it whether you like it or not. The Bible says it is appointed for a man to die once. After that comes the judgment. The way we are, we are checking, circulating videos about vaccination, about those that have it already, and how the, those that have not yet have it. If we can check our life like this, then we don't need to worry about vaccination because it's not going to enter your life because you are going to make it to heaven before then. Why are you worried about vaccination? Because you, one way in another, you know that you are not prepared yet. You are not prepared yet. Because for you to start challenging the word of God, you are not ready. Because when you have the spirit of God, the first thing you give you is discernment, wisdom, knowledge. For you to discern what people are saying. Is it the right thing? Are you doing the right thing so far? Are you right with God so far? If today is your last time, will you say that I'm prepared? Apostle Paul was ready. Apostle Paul was prepared. He knew what he was doing. He knew his relationship with God. He was not afraid at all. He said if he died, is what? His gain is going to see our Lord Jesus. He was not afraid of death. How many of us? I can say that many people are not afraid of death, but they are afraid of judgment. I myself am afraid of judgment because I don't know how uh, my judgment is going to be. Because the Bible is telling us that it makes us to understand that there is a way that seems right in the eyes of man, but in the eyes of God is the way of death. Is the way of destruction. He said also that he that thinks that he's standing, you should take heed unless he do what? Unless he fall. You might so be confident that, oh, you are right with God, but in the eyes of God, you are not. I just said the, the people that are mentioned in Matthew 7, Matthew 7, 21, 23, they were so sure that they was right with God. Why? Because they were doing the work of God. They were reading their Bible. They were praying. They was even fasting. Because for you to be able to chase the demon, you might be prayerful and fight, and somebody that fasts. Because some people, they, some demon, they don't left except for prayer and fasting. That means they were fasting too. But were they, they were not recognized in heaven. Why? Because of the iniquity in their heart. Because of the iniquity in their heart. I should read my Bible very well. Are you reading your own very well? Do you have iniquity in your heart? Are you, your heart pure? Are your heart prepared for the great day of the Lord? Walk out to your salvation with fear and trembling. You might think that you are still standing when you're already on the floor, running, rolling down on the floor, because you are guilt in one point. May the Lord help us to check our life and to read our Bible, not just in the Bible study, not just on a Sunday service, but to read it day and night. Not even to read it. The Bible says we should meditate it. To meditate and to observe. You are meditating your Bible and you are not observing. Because if you observe, observe your Bible, you know that the rapture is not going to take, the mark of the beast is not going to take place before the rapture. Because you only read, you not observe. You are only listening what people are saying. You are not reading your Bible. You are not meditating your Bible. Take time and go and meditate. Somebody post the Bible verse. You too, you go and copy the Bible verse without checking yourself through the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we should test all spirit. Which is spirit that is leading you? Which is spirit that is leading you? Anyway, I'm here to give us the word of knowledge to check ourselves and so to check through the scripture to see whether we are right or not. This is the time to prepare, time of preparation. This is the time of preparation. It's not the time of destruction. Time of preparation, not the time of destruction. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? This is not the time of arguing who is right, who is wrong. This is the time for you to be right in the eyes of God, not in the eyes of man. I can be wrong in the eyes of man. But I'm trying my best to be right in the eyes of God. And what matters a lot is God, not any man. Who is man? Man can be deceived. Can be deceived. But God, you cannot deceive God. That is, is for today. Tomorrow, we are starting our three days fasting to dedicate this month in the house of God. Whatever the enemy is planning this month, our God is powerful. 
to cancel all the plan of the enemy. This is will be your prayer. You'll be my prayer to destroy every plan of the enemy that the enemy will not succeed to destroy the body of Christ. You will not succeed to destroy the temple of God. Walk out to your salvation with fear and trembling. I will leave you with this word of meditation. Meditate Matthew 7. Ask yourself, what makes people after knowing the truth still have to be rejected by God? I never knew you. That word is very strong. How come God never knew you after all? How many years in Christianity? How many years in holiness? You still have no known by God. Why? Because your deeds are evil. Your deeds are not proved by heaven. Your deeds have not been proved by God. Maybe the Holy Spirit is not even there. Why? Because of distraction. You, things that you're supposed to do, you are not doing. The lifestyle you used to live before in the world, you're still on it. Iniquity is still dominating your holiness life. Sin, work of the flesh is still having dominion over you. This is the time to get rid of it. Because if you don't kill the flesh now, the flesh will kill you in the last minute. Work out your salvation with fear and trauma. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Shalom. I love you all. I'm following peace with all of you. Forgive me if I've offended anybody, but the word of God is always, the truth is painful and it can be bitter. But please, don't keep malice in your heart. Remember, it can be now, it can be tomorrow, it can be any moment. May the Lord bless you. Shalom. Bye.